Welcome to C programming. In today's class, we will learn how to use variables. So if we go back to code blocks, we're going to create a new empty file. I'm going to save it and call this variables.c. I'm going to save this. Hash include. S3IO.H just for repetition's sake. This is our standard input and output library. We create our main function, curly brackets for open and close, return zero at the program ended successfully. So let's say, for instance, we want to start creating some logic in our program and we want to work with certain values. How do we work with those values? How do we save those values? And so forth. And then the question arises, where are we going to put our answer for, let's say, a equation that we need to calculate? You can't just leave it somewhere and not have a specific place to store it. Otherwise, the value is just going to be lost. So, the solution to the problem is by creating variables. So variables is like a container to store certain data. We've got certain types of variables. We can have different names for variables and variables have certain data or sizes and um, characters or numbers and so on. So there's three important things that we need to remember when creating variables. The first thing is a variable needs a type. Secondly, a variable needs a name. And that name must be unique to that variable alone. And thirdly, a variable needs to have certain data. So first of all, we're going to create our very first integer variable. So how do we do it? This is going to look very familiar because we actually used it in our main function. We're going to say int int stands for integer so that's our type integer is any variable or a variable with the values of let's say 0 100 uh, minus 55 99 and so forth but no number with a comma that's not allowed so integers are numbers without a comma that's an integer so when we create this integer first or variable first we define the type we say int and then we give it a name so let's call this variable one var one so that's going to be our variable um, then we have now the type we've got the name and then our variable needs to have a size or a data data that's stored in that variable and let's put in zero and we can have semicolon so this is the shorthand to create a variable and actually also give it data by using the equal sign we're setting that variable one to the value of zero now just a quick few things that we need to consider when creating variables concerning the variable name. Variable names are unique and case sensitive, meaning that if we declare this variable as this, we need to reference back to this variable, variable exactly in the same manner. We can't say somewhere down the road var1 because this is capital letters. This is then a different name. We need to use it exactly as we have declared that variable. Secondly, there may not be any spaces in a variable name. A variable name is only one word, not two. So no spaces are allowed. If you want to create a space, you can have a underscore to keep it one word or just keep it at one word. Then variables names can't start with a number ok 
Okay, it can end with a number, but it can't start with a number. And that's the few basic rules for variable names. First of all, it's case sensitive, meaning uppercase and lowercase. Variable can't have any spaces, so it's only one word for the name. And thirdly, it can't start with a number. So now we have created this variable called var1 of type integer with a value of zero. And then what we can do is let's create another variable exactly the same and we say var2 is equal to three. Let's make var1 equal to one. So now we have two variables, one and three. Let's say we want to now add these two variables together and display the display it to the user. So what can we do? We can go and create another variable called answer. And answer is going to be equal to answer is equal to var1 plus var2. And that's actually how we can do arithmetic in C. As easy as this. But now we've got the answer. How would we go and display this answer to the user? And if you can remember, when we display something to the user on the command prompt or terminal interface, we use printf. But we haven't yet displayed variables using printf. So we can display the answer is ons. But this is going to be text, unfortunately. The, all that's going to be displayed is the answer is uns, not for in our case. So how would we go and display the variable value of uns? And we use percentage d, small letter d, sorry. So percentage d stands for decimal value. And it's like a placeholder for a variable value to be displayed at that specific point in the text. And then we put a comma. So the first part is the text that's going to be displayed with the placeholder of the value that we want to display. And what we're going to display in that placeholder is ants. Okay, so let's quickly check our program. We quickly run through it. We have our library, the main function. We have int var1 that is equal to 1. So variable 1 is equal to 1. And we have variable 2 that's equal to 3. We have created another variable called ons. And ons is equal to var1 plus var2. And then we go and display the value of Ons. So let's save this and we press the yellow gear and green triangle that's build and run and there you can see in the text the answer is 4. So just if you want to make it more neatly you can always put a new line escape sequence that we've just now spoke about in the previous video and there we have it. The answer is 4. So now that we have done integers, let's say we want to do a certain calculation that will result in a floating point or a comma value. How would we do this? So let's say, for instance, I'm going to create a new empty file just to keep this example. I'm going to create a new empty file. I'm going to save this and call this variable. dot c okay and i'm going to build on the previous example and i'm going to do exactly the same as what we've done so let's say we have now one divided by three how would we go and work with floating point values because we know that one divided by three will be or will result in 0 0.33 but we can't 
use integer because integer doesn't have comma values or floating values. So how would we solve this? So let's quickly go and see what will happen if we just use the divide. So we divide variable one with variable two. So let's see what happens. So the answer is zero. So we know for a fact that the answer is not zero, but in actual fact, 0 0.33, etc. So how would we solve this problem? And easily, this can be easily done by using float, floating variables. So we can change everything to float. So variable one is now one, but the floating variable value with comma zero zero zero. And the same for variable two. And ANSI is also a floating value. And then we go and display the floating value. So let's see what happened now. So let's quickly run this. And you'll see the answer is something very strange. Minus four, five, etc. And that's also not the correct answer. We know that the answer is 0 0.33. So what's wrong? So when we're using the printf statement, we used decimal. And decimal is connected to the integer type. So how would we display a floating value? By easily just using percentage f. So let's quickly save this and we see if this solves the problem and there you have it the answer is 0 0.33333 and we know that that is the actual answer to 1 divided by 3 or variable 1 divided by variable 2 but let's say now for instance we can upgrade this a little bit let's say we don't want um, 5 or 6 values after the comma we just want two values after the comma we can specify the amount of values after the comma so between the percentage and the f sign we can say 0.2 meaning two values after the comma or point now if we run this you will see two values after the comma, so the answer is 0 0.33. And that's how we use floating values when we expect a value with not a whole number, but with comma values as well. So now we've spoken about integers and floating values. Now we're going to create a new empty file and I'm going to save this as variable three dot c always remember your dot c okay and we are going to I'm just going to copy and paste this structure it's quicker and easier always be aware of copy and paste mistakes I've made quite a few in my life copy and paste mistakes, so always be aware when copy and paste. I'm just copying the main structure. So now we've spoken about integers and floating values. Now I'm going to show you how to create a character variable. The character variables are quite easy, easy to use. Char stands for character, so that's our type. And we're going to say character one that's going to be our variable name and character one is equal to a character let's say a but we want to go and display the value of a but will this work we don't know let's see so we are going to use the print if statement and display the character one and the value of character one so let's say the character is and we want to go and display a character so we can't use percentage d or percentage f because it's decimal and float 
So what we're going to use is percentage C for character. And we're going to display character 1. Okay. So, unfortunately, I know what's going to be the problem, but let's see what's the problem before we continue. So if we try to build and run this, you will see that there's error. Use of undeclared identifier A. The program doesn't know that this is, in actual fact, just a character, a text character. So we need to, in some way, define this to be a value of text character A. And how we do this is by using single inverted commas. So now the program actually knows that character 1, the variable character 1, is equal to the character A. And then after this, we can actually go and display this to the user. So you will see there, the character is A. So the same way, let's just quickly add a new line, just to make it nice. You will see the character is A. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our first three basic variable data types that we often use in C programming. So the first one was integer, the second one was float, and the third one was characters. And there's big differences between these three, three um, variable data types. And you need to understand what's the difference. You need to understand how to output each one of them by using the printf statement and the placeholder percentage d, percentage f, or percentage c. And you know, need to know how to use them and what's the expected output. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching and hope to see you soon.